welcome to the NIHR Dementia Research and Media Lecture Webinar. Um, I'm Adam Smith and today I'm delighted to welcome uh, Mohammed Amin Abdallahi. Did I get that right this time? I, I did have a little practice, um, but I'm going to call you Amin. <laughs> um, uh -huh. I'm in, <laughs> Amin's been studying at the Institute of Cognitive uh, Science Studies in, uh, in Tehran and um, will soon be heading to Japan to, to continue his work on his PhD in Osaka. Um, today, uh, Amin is going to talk about the bridge between cognition and the olfaction. Have I been saying that right? The old and olfaction, um, the olfactory system, uh, which I believe is the sense of smell, but I'm interested in knowing, uh, discovering more today. Um, and it's something which I know has been a hot topic for uh, for quite a while now. So the talk will be around 20 minutes and then we've allowed 10 minutes for questions at the end. If you have any questions, please add them at any time using the Q&A uh, uh, button, which should be at the bottom of your screen. And I will put those two um, in live at the end. Um, as usual, we're also recording today's uh, webinar. So if you drop out, don't worry, you can watch this back via our website and our YouTube channel. Well, we are keen for you to follow our YouTube channel, so look us up, um, Dementia Researcher. So thank you um, very much for joining us, uh, Amin, and it's kind of over to you. You can share your screen now, and, and I will mute myself. I warmly welcome you uh, to uh, this webinar, uh, and I hope uh, after the end of this webinar, uh, everything's uh, gonna be okay and uh, we know uh, a little bit more about olfaction and cognition and the bridge between them. Um, actually, I would like to uh, start my um, uh, talk with ancient uh, poet that uh, thank God uh, for giving us knowledge and trying uh, to have a better knowledge and awareness through the science. Okay, uh, as you may know, uh, the title of this webinar is a bridge between cognition and olfaction. I um, actually selected this title because uh, through my lecture, you will understand why I called and named a bridge between cognition and olfaction. Um, these are my advisors for my um, actually um, project for my master degree, uh, Dr. Aparian, Dr. Shima Talei Moineddin, and Dr. Anaita Horami. Uh, and uh, going through my lecture, uh, I selected this uh, picture because in my lecture, I'm going to uh, actually complete this bridge between cognition and olfaction. Uh, let's begin. Um, I don't know, maybe most of you are uh, familiar with uh, great uh, writer, uh, Marcel Proust, French writer. Uh, I choose to uh, put uh, this picture because uh, Marshall Prost actually, um, before many scientists uh, actually um, uh, write and wrote about uh, olfaction and cognition. In one of uh, him, uh, his stories, he uh, talked about a medellin, uh, is a French, uh, you know, sweet, uh, that uh, when the character smells the medellin, um, he go through his memories and maybe, maybe uh, that was uh, one of the first, uh, you know, uh, scientific <laughs> and literature um, stories uh, um, that Martha Prose told about olfaction and cognition. So um, I'm going to uh, have an introduction, research background, methodology, result, and conclusion. Um, I'm first going to talk a little bit about research problem. Uh, as you know, the sense of a smell is uh, really one of the uh, most ancient senses of human and one of the most oldest uh, human senses. 
but um, in the a scientist actually I mean uh, when I call it scientist I mean neuroscientist and um, actually 100 and 150 years ago I wasn't actually uh, interested enough in this uh, field I mean field of olfaction because uh, even uh, these days uh, is one of the most difficult um, uh, you know paradigm for working in this uh, sense because everything um, is out of control in the laboratory when you're working and uh, um, you know sense of a smell because uh, it's um, almost uh, non-linear and uh, is uh, on the other hand our sense of vision or auditory sense uh, are a little bit uh, user-friendly for measurement uh, but um, actually in uh, recent years scientists were uh, interested in this uh, ancient sense and I'm going to talk about it because um, uh, I actually selected elderly population for my study because as you can see in my slide um, there is uh, in the very uh, common older population and uh, more than 50 percent of individual age between 65 to 80 years old uh, have a some sort of smell dysfunction and or those who over 80 years old uh, you know uh, a dramatic uh, dysfunction in the sense of their smells can be observed uh, as you may know uh, the sense of the smell um, is actually uh, participate a critical role in our physical well-being, our quality of life, our nutrition status, and also with this, um, you know, uh, COVID-19 pandemic, um, people also from Iran reported some uh, well, symptom of early, um, you know, smell dysfunction when people have uh, COVID-19, and it's also interest. And, uh, what we have are, yeah, this is a graphical um, description of what I have told you before. Um, okay, uh, olfactory deterioration um, is very common in mild cognitive uh, impairment in Alzheimer's disease and also in normal aging. And, um, you know, as you know, some uh, interest studies uh, have recommended uh, sense of a smell as a biomarker that I'm going to talk in the rest of my slides. And, uh, you know, um, this is a big problem because um, according to WHO reports, uh, we have a, a dramatic, a dramatically increase in the of elderly people uh, uh, in the year of 2050 almost double well we can see it, uh, uh, our world population elderly are going to double and uh, you know uh, from 12 person to 22 person and it's really really important because uh, in most uh, developing country um, um, the government uh, are not ready for this giant increase in the rate of elderly. And uh, as you may know, uh, this problem is a multidisciplinary problem because economy are going to struggle with that. Uh, also, we have a, this kind of pandemic also. You can see how much, uh, you know, uh, disaster are we facing with them. So uh, I uh, told you this because uh, to uh, introduce you the importance and the necessity of my research questions. And um, oh, we should find a solution. And actually it is a fun image, but 
uh, we are going uh, now at this stage, just we are polluting uh, and not a solution. And uh, so, uh, as I told you before, uh, in recent years, uh, scientists are working on the sense of a smell because, uh, as you may know, uh, they uh, you know predict that the sense of a smell before some neurodegenerative uh, uh, disorders like Parkinson's disease or um, Alzheimer's disease uh, are going to, uh, in the preclinical uh, level, are going uh, people are going to lost their sense of uh, smell. And the sense of the smell is going to uh, play his role uh, as a, play its role as a, a biomarker and it's really important. So I have some research goals. Uh, I wanted to, uh, you know, make a little bit clearer uh, the uh, relation and correlation between the sense of a smell and other um, you know, cognitive uh, abilities that are critical in elderly, uh, such as working memory, such as cognitive uh, processing of speed and different kinds of attention that, um, um, that scientists uh, study a little a bit uh, about these topics, but um, I wanted to uh, go through the uh, details uh, in my, uh, you know, uh, project. Uh, I, uh, my question was about the uh, correlation between ability to identify other and working memory and uh, also ability to identify others and verbal fluency and ability to name. Uh, this, this is a very, the naming uh, ability is a very critical and also vulnerable uh, ability that we can see is going to, you know, um, very uh, hard to say, uh, it's going to, uh, you know, uh, broke in uh, people who has uh, Alzheimer's disease or different kinds of dementia. Uh, so uh, this is a very uh, common, um, you know, uh, our doc definition of working memory. Working memory as a um, you know active ma maintenance and flexible updating of goal tasks relevant information uh, in a form that has a limited capacity and resist interference. As you may know, uh, working memory is a kind of a new definition in the field of cognition and has some characteristic like uh, active maintenance. Um, flexible updating and also limited capacity and resistance for interference. Um, I uh, wanted to say something about Alan Badley, Professor Alan Badley with working memory model. As you may know and you have the studies, uh, this, uh, this is a working memory model of Alan Badley. But in Alan Badley working memory model, uh, the uh, you know modality of uh, smell, uh, olfactory uh, sense, and also our tactile sense are general modality. Uh, otherwise, uh, our vision and our um, sense of addition uh, is single modality. And the rule of uh, the, uh, the rule and the mechanism of the you know. Um, sense of olfaction is not also uh, clear up to date, and this is a very good domain for uh, researchers to work on. Another uh, cognitive ability that I have chosen uh, for my uh, assessment in my project was attention. I would like uh, to uh, assess people different kinds of attention. Uh, when you review the literature, you, uh, there is no study to uh, go through every kind of attention. I uh, tried my best to assess people different kinds of atten attention, containing sustained attention um, that I'm going to uh, tell you more about uh, my, uh, you know, measurements 
um, and assessment battery. Um, sustain attention when uh, you are uh, in a classroom and you are focusing uh, for more than a uh, specific time on a monotone, um, uh, you know, lecture or et cetera. Uh, selective attention, the ability uh, to maintain behavioral cognitive uh, set in the face of acting competing stimuli. For example, you're going to a grocery store and you would like to, um, you know, select some uh, fresh uh, tomatoes uh, between, uh, you know, uh, ugly tomatoes, and uh, you're using your selective attention. Um, another attention that I assessed uh, my uh, subjects with that was a divided attention. Every uh, kind of attention that I'm talking about was a specific uh, measurement battery. So I will talk about in my uh, lecture about that. As you can say, the ability to respond simultaneously to multiple tasks or multiple task demands. Um, and also, um, these are specific regions of the, our brain that uh, involve in attention that um, in the future, maybe some sort of uh, neuroimaging uh, you know, projects can uh, also revealed some secrets about our, our attention system and our, uh, you know, um, sense of a smell. Another uh, cognitive capabilities that I've chosen to assess was processing the speed and cognitive processing the speed. This is very, very important in the aging population, um, even in normal aging or in, uh, you know, dysfunctional aging and abnormal aging uh, areas. That, um, for example, I'm talking about you some uh, processing of speed and also, you know, you know, what I played now was kind of, um, you know, cognitive processing of speed. My language and my uh, cognitive processing of speed was lower and higher, you know. Um, I am going to manipulate it, but in some uh, subconscious uh, situation, we are using this uh, critical ability. Uh, these are um, the olfactory system. Uh, what what happened exactly uh, when we uh, sensed a smell of a uh, you know beautiful uh, rose flower? You know the scent or odor going through our um, olfactory uh, nasal and uh, going to olfactory epithelium. And after depolarization, uh, some sort of uh, receptors, uh, you know, activating uh, uh, action potential. And our disc code going to preform cortex, the, the primary cortex for uh, processing uh, olfactory information. Also, like uh, like um, you know, uh, we one area in our vision system, um, and these are a more detailed uh, picture of our uh, you know olfactory system. Can you uh, you can see uh, you know mucus, dendrite, auxin, mitral cells, olfactory bulb, and the rest of uh, then another important things uh, in olfactory system that olfactory sense is the only the only sense that has a direct path to amygdala. As you know, what the amygdala is a very important system in our brain, and it consists in everything. And also, internal cortex is a you know the gate of hippocampus that is related to our long term memory. Also, this, this is why when you smell in Marshall process story, when you smell uh, the sense of Madeline, uh, that guy go to his, uh, you know, very old uh, memory. Okay, uh, for um, this project, I uh, have a um, literature review that I'm going to talk about to you a little bit more. 
Um, in the first one, the association between olfactory identification and a cognitive functioning community dual and elderly that was uh, conducted in uh, China, Shanghai, um, scientists uh, observed that olfactory identification uh, may be associated with MCI in elderly population. And that study was conducted uh, between under uh, 345 subjects. Um, the other one, uh, some cognitive factors in other detection, other discrimination, other identification. Actually, I use uh, just other identification. As you may know, we have a, you know, um, measurement like TDI, threshold discrimination identification. This is a kind of a score for every people. We cannot say just your uh, olfaction is not going uh, to work properly. We should specify through uh, standard uh, assessment, olfactory assessment like University of Pennsylvania, OPSIT, UPSIT, test for assessing, uh, for example, other identification on SNF, SNF, uh, and other, uh, you know, um, assessment set for uh, outer threshold discrimination. Uh, you may see another, um, you know, um, pr project uh, in that uh, literature review, which is interesting, um, you know, in another um, uh, literature, uh, you can see impaired olfaction is associated with cognitive decline and neurodegeneration in the brain. It is very interesting that um, this, um, you know, link is uh, this path, this bridge uh, is between olf our olfactory system and our uh, other cognitive uh, abilities, which is uh, play a critical role in, in aging population, especially. As you may see, I, I actually would like to share my uh, literature review for, um, for other researchers and scientists um, for uh, this, uh, you know, reviewing it more in detail. As you may know, I've chosen those uh, cognitive abilities who are critical. Uh, in aging, like visual attention and working memory in cognitive processing and speed, and also attention. Uh, okay, we have not uh, having a lot of time, so uh, let me talk about to you my research design. Uh, my subject was uh, aged between 50 and 65 because they are pre- uh, uh, you know, elderly, and uh, this is very important for uh, that Y marker and the relationship between olfaction and cognition. My study was cross-sectional study, simple random sampling, and also uh, I've, uh, you know, experiment, my experiment was uh, between 15 subjects, actually, at the end, and was a pilot study, because I would like to start uh, the other uh, more big studies about olfactory training uh, and the role of olfactory training for increasing other cognitive abilities. So these are my uh, data collection tools. As you can see, this is for a special, um, you know, working memory. Uh, this is a PASA test for auditory working memory. Uh, IVA for sustained attention memory. The people and subjects should, you know, focus for more than uh, 15 uh, minutes uh, on the very, um, you know, exhausting task. People, when they hear or see a number one, they should click on the mouse. And um, the other one for cognitive uh, processing the speed, um, this is a test and people have a uh, look at the symbols and, uh, you know, examiner put a, a, a timer in uh, uh, how more they can write numbers in, in their specific symbol, uh, you know, uh, assessed as a, a better cognitive uh, processing speed. 
Also, this is a digit a working memory, forward and backward. Um, this is for inhibition. Inhibition is also, I have assessed their inhibition in cognitive processing speed. So when uh, people should avoid the response when see, uh, when hear uh, a beep, uh, you know, uh, alert, uh, and this is a direction test paradigm. Also, this is a, um, you know, alertness test uh, in the Rehacon uh, test battery. And this is a selective uh, test when the subjects see a complete circle, they should, you know, uh, act and respond as quick as possible. This is a selective uh, task for selective attention. Where people should just answer to, you know, vertical um, uh, squares and patterns uh, just toward. And this is a, a opposite, the smell identif identification test, 40 others for uh, smell uh, naming. And for this is for University of Pennsylvania. This is a validated and standardized test. And also this is a Montreal Cognitive Assessment Basic in the Persian language uh, that I, uh, you know, uh, I use this for uh, pre-assessment and, you know, uh, for inclusion of uh, people uh, in the normal aging population. And also BDI too for depression, as you know, in normal, uh, in aging, um, the most important things uh, also is uh, uh, mental health and, uh, you know, depression and also general, uh, general health questionnaire for quality of life you know, health, health problem and well-being. And um, as you know, I have told cross-sectional research was a kind of analytic research. Um, but this is important to know that, uh, as you know, uh, the cor uh, uh, correlation is not a causation. Therefore, the purpose of this study is not the discovery of causality between variables. Uh, let me talk about uh, my result. As you can see, there was a negative correlation between opposite, the ability to name others and PASAT. PASAT was a test for uh, measuring people auditory working memory. And this is interesting. Uh, also, the relation between MUCA test uh, and opposite with, uh, you know, cognitive decline and the range of uh, uh, people opposite uh, scores. The other result was about the negative correlation between the subject's age and positive score. As you may know, in some literature reviews and body of evidence, you can see that when people uh, going to, uh, you know, elder, uh, their uh, auditory working memory and positive scores are going down. Even this was a pilot study, but this uh, result can approve some other previous uh, results in other um, so, um, studies. And that was interesting for me because of the narrow, narrow sample size of my study. And um, also the opposite scores in the relation with the age of subject, which, which was also more interesting and can be approved by the other previous um, you know, body of evidence. Uh, I'll also, the relationship between the IVA, uh, some uh, sub-measurement item uh, with opposite scores. Uh, IVA was uh, aimed to measure people uh, sustain attention, and that was interesting for me. And also in this um, 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 slide, you can see the detailed opposite uh, scores for every people we can we have a petrol, orange, um, grapefruit, uh, lime, uh, cedar, and so on, 40 others for measuring people. Also for um, in the field of uh, olfaction, the culture is very important. Uh, uh, I, I know in Iran, uh, Dr. Talohi, which was my advisor, 
uh, you know, is uh, going to translate and, you know, validate this uh, opposite test uh, into the, uh, you know, Iranian population. Um, and this is the overall correlation map of, um, you know, um, um, my um, assessments, measurements, uh, characteristic to the others and their co inner correlation, alpha correlation and relationship. Um, and this was uh, my conclusion. There is a trend negative correlation between the smell identification ability uh, and auditory working memory with considering the opposite and possible scores. There is a trend also between the verbal fluency and the ability to name the smell and identification, there is a trend between sustained attention and the smell uh, identification ability. Also, there is a trend between age and auditory working memory, which was not about in previous um, you know, um, studies. There is a trend between age and the ability to identify others, which was in the previous and approved, can approve by previous studies. Um, my studies has a lot of uh, limitation and I'm also I wrote here a future path for interested uh, prospective researchers, which is uh, this field is very uh, exciting. Uh, as you can see my um, sample size and you know subjects and my a little uh, long assessment process was um, you know uh, actually my limitation and uh, mistakes uh, future path it is possible to use interventional methods based on the olfactory uh, sensory modality for further studies of this kind of methods for cognitive function also other studies could design to investigate the relationship between the ability to discriminate um, actually the dti score that i talked about before and olfactory threshold with uh, you know cognitive uh, function also um, moreover uh, the effect of olfactory stimuli and subject performance during cognitive task and uh, in the absence of olfactory stimuli uh, could be studied in the future by other scientists and researchers so uh, i would like to uh, you know Acknowledgement. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to my family and uh, my mom, dad, and sister, and my uh, beloved um, professors. And uh, I think thank you for your attention. And uh, I hope that this was interesting for you too. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Amin. That was uh, really you. interesting. And you're the, definitely the, the first person to thank the mum and family, uh, which I think is very sweet of you. Well, well done. Uh, think, how, uh, how, how many, much time? Uh, how many much? of us no, uh, owe our thanks to our family and don't appreciate that. Um, yeah, you've massively overrun. Thank you so much. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> I, I think um, you're the first person to present for us where English isn't necessarily your first language. So. Uh, I think you did remarkably well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank so we will. We, yeah, exactly. We, I need to uh, express that, um, you know, English is not my first language and uh, I'm so sorry for any mistake. No, no, no. I, you did. You, you did fantastically well. Thank you. Um, okay, you we'll so go much. to the questions now. Um, uh, yeah, Neil yeah. Uh, made a really interesting point in the uh, Q&A uh, in the um, discussion box Hi, earlier, Neil. but I'll I'll pick up on his question first of all. So Neil Oxby, oh, if you could stop sharing your uh, slides now, I mean, um, okay. uh, Neil made a asks a question here. Neil Oxby uh, from Oxford, I believe. Um, have you looked at other data sets, for example, the Parkinson's Progression Marker uh, Initiative, the PPMI? So, have you looked at any other data sets, for example, the Parkinson's uh. Progression? Yeah, which are freely available to researchers across the world. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, as I told you, uh, um, I just uh, have a, you know, literature review and the uh, articles, but I know that um, um, uh, about the Parkinson biomarkers, and I, as I told you in my lecture, and this is very, very important and, you know, giant uh, discovery for, uh, you know, uh, preclinical um, diagnosis for 
uh, people who are um, suffering from Parkinson's disease um, uh, with uh, olfactory biomarker. Uh, I haven't, uh, you know, uh, have a detailed look at this uh, data set, but I appreciate and I'm really open uh, for this kind of studies. And uh, if you can see, I, I think this is a kind of mach machine learning and some sort of computational neuroscience. Uh, if I go into through this. And I, I think Neil is a bit of an expert on machine learning. I think that's uh, his particular special interest, yeah. Eric. Uh, I hope I'm not wrong in saying uh, that. Uh, it is my pleasure. It is my pleasure to, uh, you know, uh, know their, uh, his uh, answer for this question. Um, close enough, he says. Um, yeah, just picking up on a point you made in the chat on slide um, 18, it looked like there was a negative you, correlation Neil. with the with the upset, um, maybe driven by the outliers, um, which may show no significant correlation by the eye. Would you agree with that? Uh, in my study? Yeah. I yeah. think it was going back uh, to your yeah, yeah, study, yeah. Yeah. Um, the outliers. As you, as you, as you know, uh, this was a pilot study and my subjects was only 15 subjects, okay? And um, I'm not going to, you know, um, you know talk about, um, um, you know, conducting, um, uh, th this was a, you know, primary correlation yeah. result. And we, uh, we cannot look at this one because my sample size was very few and I cannot talk about this um, with a certain Yeah, of course. Statement. I mean, interesting to add some more numbers in that. I think he also makes the point that the PPMI has upset um, and many other clinical markers, uh, also neuroimaging such as MRI, um, 400 patients yeah. and 200 controls. Um, so uh, let's have a look. Sure. Uh, uh, we'll invite anybody else to uh, ask any questions. Now we have overrun a little bit, so we're probably not going to spend quite as long on questions as we as we normally do. So I, w I was quite interested. What what would you um, say? Uh, I mean, were are there other people working on this uh, at your university? Is this something that's a continuing piece of work there? Is and is this going to be the focus of your PhD that you're you're moving on to next? Um, actually, um, I'm going to have a little switch between senses. I'm going to you know work on the visual system uh, in my PhD. But uh, I can tell you more about, uh, we have, um, we don't have enough centers for uh, studying olfaction in Iran, in Tehran. Uh, and uh, one of the first scientists who work in this area was Dr. Tahalui, as I, as I mentioned. Uh, he studies uh, he, uh, he in Italy uh, as a PhD student, and they came back to Iran. And, um, you know, uh, uh, as I told you, uh, working on olfaction, experimental design is very hard. Uh, it has a, a lot of, uh, you know, um, it needs a lot of money because in Iran, we do not have a validated olfactometer for, uh, you know, neuroimaging and, uh, you know, binding with uh, MRI and fMRI. And this is um, really sad. I don't know uh, uh, about in the UK. Uh, are, are you know um, that there is olfactometer in the field of in UK? Uh, I have to say I'm not entirely sure. I do know that this has been this is something that that has been getting particularly looked at. So I can imagine it, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, because, more... because you know uh, when we do not have olfactometer that sync with uh, MRI. Uh, we do not know uh, when exactly the um, you know the time of stim stimulus going to the to our brain. So we have to uh, we have to run some experiments or uh, you know um, uh, uh, projects in, in the field of olfaction in Iran. We need some uh, infrastructural facilities for doing more and more uh, works in Iran. In the field so, of olfaction. Yeah. I can understand that. 
Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm just going to check if there's no more questions. There aren't. Well, thank you very much again. I mean, my pleasure. We're, we're really grateful for you uh, agreeing to share with us today. Uh, and apologies to uh, everybody for my not being able to use my camera. Um, but um, no, no, it's OK. I understand. Sadly, things like Twitter are rather difficult to access in Iran. So uh, usually it's this point where I'd point people towards your your Twitter account. But I know that's slightly problematic uh, for you. But I know you are on Instagram. I made a promise. I made a promise to you. I made a promise to you to, uh, you know, create a Twitter account. Perhaps you could tell us what your name is on on Instagram. And my uh, Instagram name is uh, cog underline talk c o g underline talk t a l k and Good also i would like to thank you for uh, managing this uh, webinars i know you are very hard working and you are very kind and uh, I, I i wish that everything going uh, very well in the future we don't have any more webinars scheduled right now, but do keep an eye on the webinars page of our website where uh, we do hope to get another one in the diary uh, either next week or, or uh, late the week after next. Uh, the recording from today and details of future webinars, as always, can be found on our website at dementiaresearcher.nihr.ac.uk forward slash webinars. Um, I want to also let everybody know that we're also running a, a little small competition right now to win a pair of headphones. So if you'd like to win, uh, you've already uh, completed stage one of the tasks that you're given by uh, joining our webinar today. Um, what you also have to do is leave us a review on iTunes and uh, make sure you're registered on our website and we'll pick the winner at the uh, end of the month. Um, last of all, um, if you'd like to join us and present your own research as a midday uh, lecture, please do drop us a line through the contact us page on our website or DM us on uh, Twitter using the hashtag dem underscore uh, researcher. And of course, uh, I would also highly recommend everybody uh, find our podcasts wherever you get your podcasts. And we do have a special uh, five part series um, called the Relay podcast series that we've been recording with the Alzheimer's Association and I start, which is coming out um, the week after next. So thank you very much everybody again for, for joining us. Thank you, Amin, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in our next webinar later, later this month. Thanks. Bye-bye.